there, there are some cool tricks to knowing how to weigh and measure, and I'm going to show you some of those. First of all, be more concerned with consistency than accuracy. There's no such thing as accuracy in this. If you can get a dead-on consistent measurement every time, you'll have some apples-to-apples -apples comparisons, and that's going to be information you can use. So let me show you how we do it down here. First thing, I like to measure the neck. Make sure you don't get any hair in there because it will change the measurement. Remember, you're trying to get information you can use. So I'll try to get right in the middle of the neck. I'll take it around right there. And I've got about 11.25. And I like to do them in 2.5 or 0.25 increments, so 11 and a half, 11.25. That, um, I love the neck because it's a litmus test. It teaches me whether or not um, this is, like if I do the neck and the arm and they both move about the same, then I know that, that my app measurements are more accurate or more consistent. Okay. From here, take your arms out and hold them straight out to your sides. You'll have a tendency to want to let them sag. If you do, it'll change the measurement. Okay. So, <clears throat> arms out to the side. And we do this little slide technique. So I'll start putting some upward pressure on that. And that tape will slide in where it wants to be. And I can get that every single time. So I'll measure that. That's a 30.75, right? And so then, do it again, just to make sure you got it. 30.75, it's perfect, okay? It's another thing you can do. Keep taking it over and over and then do the law of averages. That way it's not measurement error, okay? The next one I like to do, I like to do a waist measurement. And the way that we do this is I like to find the place on the waist that's the narrowest. They tell you um, to do it on your belly button, but I'm going to show you why that's not a good idea here in a minute. Right now, what I want you to do is find the narrowest place on the waist. Do that slide technique, slide it around a little bit. That tape will settle and measure. Okay, 25 and a half right there. Do it again just to make sure. 25 and a half. I never miss on that one. So, if, let's say you don't have a narrow part of your waist. If, if the waist moves out and you don't really have one, at that point, go ahead and just eyeball it and measure the biggest part. Okay, and that'll be something else that you can do until it gets littler. Um, and, and then, let me show you why that belly button thing doesn't work. Okay, it's got a nice belly button. They tell you to do this on the belly button, but watch this. If you try to do it right over the belly button, I'm going to call that a 28.25. No, I'm going to call that a 28.5. Now watch. I'm going to move it that far. It didn't even move the length of the tape. Now I'm at 27. If I miss it just by a smidgen, I don't have any information I can use. And now I've got measurement error, and I don't know if I'm making any progress, and it's frustrating. So instead of moving that down, I just prefer to do these measurements. It's not accurate, but it's extremely consistent, and that's all we really care about when we do this. Now, we've got to go to the hips. When it's the hips, I like to do everything very consistently. So Liz likes to wear this kind of stuff a lot, so I'll always measure her like this, but I'll probably pull that shirt out of the way so I don't have to measure it. At this point, I'm going to eyeball the widest point of the hips. All right? They tell you to do it ASIS. Uh, there's problems with that because the backside slopes so much it's hard to become really accurate. So I'll find where that tape wants to live. And generally, that tape wants to live in the same place that it always does. That's kind of the widest point on the back side and the front. I got a 33 and a half. Let's try it again. 33 and a half. Okay. So if you'll go in and just try to eyeball here, and remember, it's not just here. You have to eyeball the back part too. You might have to measure a little high of that depending on how your backside shape in order for you to get some real consistent results. But the most important thing is just keep measuring and keep measuring and keep measuring until you've got some, some real consistency. Now, the leg. I like to do the leg at as close to a 90 degree angle as I can um, because it puts the kneecap in the exact same spot. Right? If your leg's straight or your leg's not quite at 90 degrees, then I get a different reading. And this is how we do our leg measurement a lot. I will go palpate. I'll, I'll find the top of her kneecap and I'll place that on the top of her kneecap and I'll measure up four inches, okay? Now, some people go six inches to get more of the meat of the thigh. That's fine if, if that's the way you like it. Now, what you have to do, a lot of folks will take a pen and they'll mark where that is. Um, for me, I just put a little fingerprint in there, and I'll find that fingerprint every time. I always measure above the, the fingerprint, and I got a 15.25. Now, watch what happens if, you don't, if you're not dead on consistent with that. If you miss that, if you measure below the fingerprint, I moved that about the, the width of the tape. I got a half, I got a whole inch difference there. 
Okay, so you've got to develop a consistent way of doing this. I go from the top of the kneecap, the back of the top of the kneecap. You don't go to the top because that'll change your. Watch how much that moves, right? So the top of the back of the kneecap, four inches. Make a little fingerprint right there. Always measure above the fingerprint, and there's my measure. Okay, so keep those things in, in mind. Last one I like to take. I like to take an arm measurement. Again, it kind of tells us how our progress is. But it may change for some people depending on how they have that arm, right? So let's always keep it up anatomical position, and that'll work a little better for you. And then the way, what I like to do is I come down here and I look at her little folds in her skin, and I'll always measure from the top of the top or from the middle of the top one. Some of you have three, some of you just have one. Um, whatever it is, I'll find the top one so I never forget. That's my rule. I'll measure up two inches. I'll measure from the top of that little mark I just made with my fingernail. And I got a 9.25 on that. And then I'll come and do it again just to make sure. Two inches. That's another 9.25. So the more consistent you are with these, the better luck you're going to have at making see, seeing what your gains and what your losses are. And that will give you information you can use. And, and if you'll use those little tips we gave you, I think you'll be more successful.